it's a guilty pleasure of mine. You know, I, I'm okay, not I proud to say I like to watch this show, but I do like to watch this show. <laughs> so okay. whatever. We People like watching vices. The Bachelor. I like watching this. <laughs> right, yeah, bring that so sue me. All right, whatever. <laughs> Welcome to the Anime Izuka Podcast. On this episode, we'll be giving our thoughts on the summer 2021 season of anime. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Stren. Hello, everyone. Next up, we have Ku. This is Ku. Next up, we have Taylor. Hello. And finally, we have Justin. What's up, guys? All right, so we are uh, back from our break from July 4th. So we're going to head into the new format that we're doing. So we used to do uh, wiki discussions on... Uh, the current episodes but we're gonna switch from that so uh, this episode we're just gonna give our thoughts on upcoming anime for next season in summer 2021 um for that just want to go through some things uh just a couple anime news real quick we have uh the full metal alchemist creator she's gonna be uh i guess saving her new manga sometime soon i didn't realize that she was done with silver spoon i know that's been going on for a while yeah um, right so i mean I anything we're... from her would be pretty hype yeah, so, so it's definitely it's been a while. Silver, how was Silver Spoon? <laughs> I personally haven't read the entire manga, but I watched both uh, seasons of the anime and thoroughly enjoyed it. It's just like a super comfy slice of life Farmville focus. <laughs> what in the hell? I watched I watched yeah. the first season. Um, I think I was just I think I wasn't at the right mind space to appreciate it because I was look, looking forward to a follow up to FMA, but now that like I'm really interested in like in like in like like a lot of Japanese. Culture, especially like 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 slice of life Japanese things. Like I think I appreciate it now being like mm-hmm. like this whole Kyle High School, like the agricultural focus. So I think I appreciate it now more than I did yeah. way back way back. The so changes, be... under... the changes right, under... go ahead, oh, I was just gonna say the change is understandable after uh, such seriousness with FMA. Right. I think that's a big thing. I don't think there's any insight yet into if it'll be more like FMA, if it'll be more like Silver Spoon or what genre, you know, she's kind of tapping into next, but hey. Very uh, accredited, nonetheless, so I'm sure it'll be pretty great. <laughs> and then another big hype we, uh, when we got uh, Vinland Saga Season 2 announced. So, so still oh, excited, yeah. it, but it. there's there's a lot of, there's There's not, like, um, was it? There's a lot of science being given on who's still actually animating it, because Witsio didn't say they were going to do it, so we will see. Yeah. <laughs> Too many train wrecks. I mean, there. yeah, if Wit Studio doesn't do it, it's going to be a little rough, but the story should hold up regardless of who's animating it, hopefully. <laughs> God. We'll take it at that. Yep. So that's just uh, that's it for um, just for quick anime news. Um, before we give our um, thoughts on this review, um, Taylor here wants to give us quick shout outs to Fruits Basket because uh, she just finished it. Ended. So, yep, so take it away, Taylor. So my to give you an indication of how much I thoroughly enjoyed Fruits Basket, I had planned to watch one episode on Monday night or I don't know, whatever those first days were after it finished. And I ended up staying up until 430 in the morning watching the entire show. You fool. Um, it was absolutely impossible to click away. It was excellent. Um, anybody, I'm not going to go too much into it. Most people know what Fruits Basket is. It's either your thing or it's not. But if you haven't watched it yet and you've seen the previous seasons, or if you're wondering about it and getting into it, honestly, like the characters are top notch. The ending is so satisfying in like every single way, which is something I pretty rarely say about anime. <laughs> um, the like, if there was only one thing that I had to criticize about it, and this is like really splitting hairs. It's that I still think that number one, the music isn't too great. And number, although the music in the show is fantastic, just the openings and endings, not really my thing. Uh, and then also, some of the resolutions near the end felt a little bit contrived to me, like power of friendshipy. <laughs> but um, other than that, it, it, it that's just like splitting hairs, and it was fantastic, ten out of ten. Um, and that's really all I have to say about it. Nice. Well, I think anything, you know, that can uh, dethrone Full Metal Alchemist on my mm-hmm. anime list deserves at least a, a watch treatment. Mm-hmm, so. For sure. All right, so that was, our, that, that was Taylor's thoughts on Fruits Basket. Shout out to you, um, Desmond. I know you wanted to hear that, so. Ayush as well. 
Yes, that too. So let's um, and also before I guess we move on to the summer preview, I guess we should mention that we still have a bunch of ongoing shows from the spring season. Mm. So we still have Poker Revengers, Two Year Attorney, uh, My Hero Academia, and Shaman King. Those are all continuing to the summer season. So we still gotta watch that. We'll still um, we'll we'll make we'll, we'll try to make a, a discussion episodes for all those shows once um once they end. So look forward to them. David, but Eden Zero and Digimon are still okay. going too. Okay, I'll I'll put Eden Zero in just because um, happy, <laughs> oh, that's happy right. that happy that How you don't want forget? to know about that. So, so I'll, well, well, I'll shout Eden Zero. So you you get your Digimon. But the out Digimon sure. remake. <laughs> oh, no, you get your Digimon out of here. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about Digimon in the year 2027 when the remake finishes. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so bad. Ah, uh, that's rough. I remember I watched the first few episodes and then it's just like, ooh, yeah. I don't know about this one, Chief. <laughs> yep. All right. So, so that's the ongoing shows. Now let's get the actual um, summer um, previews. So we'll start. With, we'll start with. Uh, I guess. I guess we'll just start with like, just like um, the list. Uh, let's starting with like the ones I guess we're most excited for. So I'm gonna start with um case study of Anitas because um the first two episodes that actually came out already by the time this airs. So um I just wanna say this is already like my favorite of the season, like just based on the two episodes I've seen. So Dude, same here. I'm loving the dynamic between Noah, <laughs> Noe, and uh Vanitas. Like they just have me dying and I can't wait to see kind of their bond just further yep. grow. <laughs> so I guess should um give I'll give try to give it a brief summary. Um, I guess like this is um, oh I guess vampires. Yes, but well, yes, vampires. But nineteenth century uh 19th century France Paris. or yeah, Paris, yes. France. What a twist! Because okay, yeah, that was because I was a little confused at the beginning whether it was like was it like like actual so it takes place like in actual like Earth or is like some other like, world because we have the we have the airships at the beginning so mm-hmm. I was like a little mm-hmm. confused on like. Where it's going, but yeah, basically 19th century France. Um, there's basically two main characters. There's one, the one guy, he's he's a vampire, and there's another one, he's he's human, but he has this this book called the the like the something Venus. I I think this is the book of Venus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Essentially, you have two factions of vampires: those that come from the Red Moon, and then you have Venus, who is a human or vampire that was born under the Blue Moon, which is kind of looked as like a ostracized kind of coming of a vampire and so exactly as david was kind of saying you know many years now have passed with kind of the descendants of these two vampiric tribes i guess you'll call it where um one of these from the followers of vanitas has this book of vanitas which is a tomb that can either cure or curse vampires and we're, we're learning more about that as this show kind of opens up but uh, again, fantastic opening, you know, really excited to have Bones behind this for people mm-hmm. that have been a fan of like Bungo Street Stray Dogs. It gives a lot of similar vibes in, in mm-hmm. that vein. Um, and that as I was kind of, yeah, right. <laughs> no, um, it had me on the edge of my seat the very first episode. And then I think like I was telling both Taylor and David before this, the balance of both humor, seriousness and just overall fun of the show in just the first two episodes mm-hmm. has been phenomenal. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, yeah, it just feels like a fresh of breath air to me. Like, it's just a, even like I really don't like vampire stuff at all. So anybody who is turned off by vampires, try not to let that like dissuade you from watching this. It doesn't really seem to like hung up on like the same. Really, old like, it doesn't really tropes. have like any any of the vampire tropes because like the, yeah, it's most it's like, they're just like they're just stronger, stronger humans, basically. Mm-hmm. Like there's barely any of the traditional vampire tropes in here. So it's just. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. uh yeah, just to chime in. Uh after Nobilis, no more <laughs> vampires. Unless it's yeah, Castlevania, which is old school, so that's the only reason mm-hmm. why I'll let it pass. Well, no more vampires for me, I'm done. Okay. Well, well I will say your decision. I wanna let Nose <laughs> Blast like like just ruin vampire stuff. That's true. But but to Ku's point, you know, there there are very few out of like the entire genre of vampire shows that I think kind of hit the nail on the head at times. So yeah. I think if anything, that's the only thing I could see if they kind of drop the ball. But so far, there's been nothing in that nature. It's, it's been, fresh, like yeah, Taylor it's... said, and it's been a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. The only thing yep. else I'll, I'll say is like I'm kind of worried that like maybe like the humor will be like be um in the wrong place sometimes, like mm. and like they have it like. It it becomes like a weird like it it like they put it like in places where it's too serious. That's my only concern. Mm-hmm. But so far, like yeah, there. I've been, I've been enjoying it. So like like the, 
There were some people online that were complaining about Hane and Natsuki emceeing uh, Vanita, Vanitas, but I was and they like they like they were saying that like they didn't picture his voice for that role, and they were a little bit anxious about it because apparently stuff in the manga later on does get like more serious, and they're really curious to see how he'll do those scenes. But we've seen him in like Attack on Titan. I think it'll be fine. He he can he can change it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, but those have been I, the only negative things I've seen. So like I'd say like Kiss Save Me is like this is like the one show I would definitely recommend to someone like this for this summer like. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely my top. Agreed. So I guess we'll move on from there. Um, move on to the next preview. It's, I just want to, you know, Detective is already dead. Um, this one, I don't know. Like, all right, Taylor. Had, so had, I want... had a Taylor had something. She had strong feelings, so maybe she should start this off. So <laughs> to summarize quickly what this show is about, it covers a lot of ground in two well, episodes. First episode, it's an hour, like 40 minutes. An hour so. long, yeah. 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 That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, this middle schooler <laughs> runs in, who is a trouble magnet runs into this other middle schooler who is a world-class detective, apparently. And they take down some grade B bad guy on a plane. <laughs> and... She, uh, it was all her plan from the get-go, and then she begs him to be her sidekick. They use the word sidekick frequently in this show. And, um, he agrees eventually after a bunch of cajoling. And I will say, I'll interject quick, that their relationship with each other, I like. That's the part of the show I like. I like their back and forth a lot. I think it, like, for me, it it just, I, I liked it. Um, and then... It fast forward. They, they okay. So he becomes her sidekick, and apparently they have three years of adventures together. But you don't see any of it. They just talk about it. And then it fast forward to three years later when he's a senior in high school. Don't tell and... me. Detective is already dead. Mm-hmm. She's dead. And so um, he's still uh, getting people to come up and ask him for mysteries, and it kind of goes to help with mysteries, and it kind of goes from there. So that's the show. Um, from my description, you can probably tell what my, some of my issues with it were (laughs) like the fact that he's a middle schooler drove me crazy, but whatever, it's already fast forwarded by the end. So it's fine, I guess. Um, uh, uh, go go ahead. ahead. I don't want to interrupt you with Taylor. (laughs) Well, I was just going to say also like the constant reiteration that like trouble finds him. There better be a reason why for this at some point. Cause like, that just seems really random to me. Not a fan of that either. Um, and just like the lore of the show is a little convoluted to me with these secret organizations and whatnot it just seems really messy is really how i feel about it but the relationships between the characters and the dialogue i like so i'm gonna set it out okay those are my thoughts so i'll just say like yeah that first like 10 minutes of the show is so random like because yeah it just mm-hmm. it introduces like the, yep. the main guy it's like this guy okay he's he's called like a trouble magnet but like it's like this common anime Thing about being like attracted to curses so it's like it's like this thing where like you're like you're unfortunate whatever so that's i guess they translate it like as troublemaker mm-hmm. but like it's like this like i think i think it's like a shinto or a buddhist thing where it's like it's like this belief that like you're you're cursed so you always have like bad luck happen to you so mm-hmm. but that's like okay. an anime thing that i kind i mean it's still really weird but like if you think about it logically but like it's an anime mm-hmm. thing so I'll let that slide a little, but then <laughs> everything else is like is really weird. Like, like that the guy, yeah. the guy's a troublemaker. Of course, like the the main girl is like this detective, but again, it's anime thing. So I'll let that slide. But then like the whole <laughs> the whole thing of like the the plane battle and like the the, the guy being like a part <laughs> android with a thing going in his ear that was really weird. Like mm-hmm. that just really so, threw yeah. me off. Yeah. Also, the music sucked. Like, the music in this show sucks. It does not add uh, to the tension or the drama or anything at yeah, all. It has almost no music. I music. I don't remember soundtrack, so you're asking the wrong <laughs> That's guy. because there was no soundtrack. It was almost, like, pure silence. No, I can, I can time. chime in. I usually remember soundtracks as well. And to Taylor's point, like, I can't even remember what, like, they yeah. did for, like, certain OSTs and stuff, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, you were going to so, say something, Sredden? Yes. So, I, like I said, I already dropped one show this season. This was the one. Oh, okay. I uh, watched half of it and Good I quit. <laughs> what uh, what specifically made you throw in the towel? Yeah, I don't know. It was it just it was just weird. Just like their back, just how they talk, their back and forth. Okay, I, it I'll, was just... I'll mention that. I'll make that as Shrine's point too. That's like my other my my other complaint was like these characters. They talk like they're in a light novel. Like it's so very like yeah. Like they try. Monotone. There's no. Like, it's there's like very, no... It's very stiff and like it's yeah. There's it's, no life. 
it's like it's like it feels like you're reading it feels like you're reading like a like a script or like or like, like you're you're like in a book and you're just reading the, the paragraphs between the characters back and forth where it just and doesn't feel just natural yeah not just reading it but all monotone yeah. like there's yeah. no yeah. there's not a lot there's not a lot of emotion between that's, the that's, 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 like, like, that, that's like the majority of their banter so it's like yeah like so I so it's like I like the content, but like the way they deliver it, it's very light novel ish. Like I would agree with that. Like That's the language, they, the language they use is very much like they try and sound not not poetic, but it's like they try and sound like like literature. But it sounds so mm-hmm. weird in anime having that literature Terrible. format. They literally so. maybe they're just literally copy pasting from the light novel that it originates well, like, from. And, yeah. and That's not like, balancing off. That's but, like the one. That's like the thing. Like like I know like like I'm usually a person who says like you need to keep things like keep things to the original but that's like a thing like where okay you're in a different format you need to adapt this to like an anime mm-hmm. format yeah. like you need I, to make it like natural to say these things yeah not to go much further but i think for me i, I agree both with you david and, and taylor for your kind of gripes and, and things with the show i think you know the lore is something that they definitely just throw you right in and just make you accept things as is with very little explanation so it's kind of just like oh okay um but i think for me what was really interesting, without going too much into it, was the animation that they used for some of the parts of the fight scene, where it's very stylized and like high quality. Like, did not see that coming in a looked show really like good. this. I mean, I um, guess, yeah, it looked really good. Just but, whole... just but yeah, the environment in which they're doing this and the reason for why this animation comes up is very just out there. Um, and especially for those once you do, if you do, you know, watch the next episode for episode two. Um, it kind of goes further and kind of jumps the shark. To David's point, the very episode one ends with, you know, title drop. No the job. detective is dead. <laughs> so that's the one thing that I will say is I'm kind of curious. Is like, okay, well, if you're just going to skip, you know, three-year gap or whatever it is, like, okay, hopefully you're going to tell me why the detective is dead. So if anything, that's like the one small thing holding on. But I think it really depends on, like, how well they get into that background or if they just do a time skip. And now it's like, oh, okay, we're going to do other events. You know, oh. with this crisis magnet. So even with all the my other issues, end. like I'm still gonna, I'll still watch it. Like there's still some things that interest me about the show, mm-hmm. but like it's very hard. It's like it's it's hard for me to recommend this to someone. Like because I, I totally yeah. understand why Strand drops it. Because like I mm-hmm. I get like all well, that complaint. Like yeah. so this is the one yeah. show that I think if I'm gonna drop a show, it's gonna be this show. Yeah, same. And I know like like there's a lot of praise online for like for this show so like i know right like it's really high up on like the list you know what i mean that's why i even added it to mine i've seen like a lot of top comments on the red thread like we're really praising the first episode only when Mm -hmm. you go like down the middle where you see people actually complain give the same complaints that we have so it's Mm -hmm. it's it's hit or miss so i feel i feel like it's like i think like if you're not familiar with this this type because i feel like i've seen these type of shows before or like in like either manga or light novels so i'm so familiar with with this style, mm-hmm. so I think like if you are, you understand like the the criticism and the tropes. I think if you're, if it's not, it feels more new. So I think that maybe that's people people who are praising it. They're not really familiar with this type of thing. So I don't know. Because no. it, it was just we will see. It, it is <laughs> the first episode was really weird. Like, uh, yeah. The, the, just let me know if the character, like how they, like how their like interactions and stuff, if they're any more like loose or if they're just going to be kind of stiff, like I'll they're reading like, off the that's... teleprompter. The second episode, like, I think it was just the, the 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 banter between like like the main guy and the main girl, like Siesta, like sh- like th- that was the weirdest part. Because episode two, it got a little bit better with the new girl, but like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, we can't go much too much deeper. We'll but, just leave it as is, yeah. as a brief introduction of what we've seen. So, <laughs> also, try to finish it. I also, um, I'm gonna do this fun fact because I'm a VTuber simp. So the ending song. Uh, is by this VTuber, not technically VTuber, like, her name is uh, Kaguya Nana. She's the artist of one of the VTubers from Mahalo Live, and she actually is a VTuber herself. And I guess mm. she's a singer now, too, so I guess she sings and draws. So she sang the ending song for this show. And then episode three, there's actually gonna be two people from Mahalo Live that are gonna be cameoing in the show. So I'll just see next week where they show up. So that's fun facts for you, for fans. So. No. Well, that's it for Detectives Already Dead. Uh, let's move on to our next show. Uh, let's talk about Sunny Boy. I actually have no idea what the show is about. I just heard here about the hype, so I'm going to just in to enlighten me. Yeah, so I was, I guess, fortunate enough to see the early airing of the first episode, um, which I think was either last Friday or the Friday before. I can't remember now. 
But um, no, kind of to your point, David, this is one of the shows that, you know, is an original show. So uh, the premise seems very interesting. It, it seems very kind of mysterious and almost in the veins of kind of a mob psycho type approach where you have oh. a group of high schoolers that end up in a predicament where they now all have these variety of abilities and we don't really know anything about how these abilities came to fruition. They're just, you know, now have them. Um, but I think one of the other big things for this show is the art style. It's not necessarily like a rotoscope art style, but it is, you know, not your usual art style that you see kind of in a, a lot of animes nowadays. So I think with the kind of mysterious premise and the art style that they're taking, it, it definitely has a lot of potential. And um, from a first episode, it, it sucked me in right away. So Oh. Definitely, we'll be we'll be keeping up with this one. I remember hearing awesome. about this. It was like a sci something. It was like sci fi, and like I know, I think I know, like Funimation was like part of. I think they're like part of the production committee. Um, mm. And then also, I see it's by Madhouse, and apparently the director is the he's he's director from the first season One Punch Man. So okay, I think I remember hearing. You can definitely that. see that makes sense. So, so but but yeah, that's um, all. That's all I really gotta say. It's it's something fresh and something interesting for sure. Yeah, so. I don't know. I don't know when the first episode's actually supposed to air. Maybe this week, but it's it's coming. So. Um, yeah. I think it's said the fifteenth. Okay. But, yeah, that looks right. Like definitely this. I think this definitely like because anime originals are usually talked about every season. So definitely this will be mentioned. Mm -hmm. Kind of like how you mentioned like BV last season. Like I think this will be the anime original that people are talking about this season. So so if you're always interested in like in new stuff, like especially anime originals, like, keep an eye out for Sunny Boy. Mm -hmm. So. For sure. But I guess, yeah, we'll get that for Sunny Boy. Um, move on to our next show. Uh, let's mention Higurashi, the new, the new season. Um, heads up, I've only seen the first episode of this season. This is one I wasn't able to catch up to on time, so I'll let you guys pave the way on this. Or is it just David? Um, oh, I was watching it, too. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so, basically, if you saw Go, uh, you're not really missing much. This is just basically the rerun of go but you're yeah. seeing it from reina's perspective uh three episodes in you're still on the uh the first arc that was shown in go so uh to be honest you're really not missing much i figured <laughs> so yeah. I, yeah. I should mention yeah this is this is called the season's called setsu where it's like the reboot the first mm -hmm. part the reboot is called go so this is setsu mm -hmm. but i don't know how i feel about them like going back to like all the way back to like where we were starting with reina again like we did it in the first part of Go, because oh like God. I was like I was expecting them to go right off of where we left off with Satoko and Rika mm -hmm. calling them out, but that's you not how Higurashi does it. Oh, okay, yeah. so I don't know. This is normal. This was this was expected. That's oh, the way okay. they would do this, at least for me. This is how they've done past seasons too. So, gotcha. I I personally don't mind it just because uh it it fleshes out the characters more. And I feel like by doing it this way, you can you get to see the whole story. So mm -hmm. if you were like me in a first and and go, you're just trying to piece things together. It's mm -hmm. nice to see like the world come, like the mystery come together and solve itself mm -hmm. in a sense. I guess it's just although being impatient, what, then yeah, yeah. But what the, the the only thing that bothers me is the opening because the opening just sets up this this premise that there's gonna be a grand battle between Rika and uh, Satoko later on. And then also with the whole emphasis on like the uh, like Keiichi and the others, uh, like you know, with like in, in their stance as a adult, it, it seems like in their in their college years, and they're kind of just like staring down on you with like no eyes and like a like a sinister smile. It makes me wonder what's going to happen with the future as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of like getting you hyped up for a pretty tense moment i'm assuming but i don't know if it's something i should look forward to or not pay much uh not pay too much attention to um but yeah so far it's like i said you're not really missing much but i do enjoy the pace that they're going at so i would recommend um cool it sounds like you're pretty in it but david i would recommend when you're watching it just make sure you're still paying attention when you watch it because a lot of times at least for the previous stuff there are things that change. The characters are unreliable narrators and things like that. So there will be details that change. Even if it's like retelling the same story, you okay. never know what's what'll yeah. be different. So still just pay attention. <laughs> okay. I wasn't like I wasn't like giving it like much thought, but I'll try to pay more attention next time. I, <laughs> I know it's it, hard. I felt like first. it was retelling. Although I am curious like when um when it comes to the part when it goes to Satoko's arc and when her and her uncle comes back, I'm curious 
I like explain that because I remember Ku was like trying to like oh, give his prediction. The bitch is happened. evil. I knew it. <laughs> and like I want, to, I actually want to see what happens now. Like how much did Ku get right? So I'm really curious when we get to that part. Yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about, right? Like I can't wait for that arc too, just because I I want to see how much of it I was spot on, and how much of it was just pure BS. Mm-hmm. But I mean, yeah, that's that, that's that's what I like about this anime, you know. So I'm I'm glad we're we're, we're getting it in this style. So do um do any of you guys know like with this arc? that I assume, you know, they're covering with, you know, this anime. Is it a longer arc? Is it a shorter arc? I'm just looking at the number of episodes and it's slotted for 15 episodes, which seems kind of like an interesting choice. But I didn't know if you guys had any insight into, you know, with what because, they're planning to cover. If it's like no, a longer no, ending. I'm going in blind. Yeah, right. Okay. This, well, this is all new. This is all original. Oh, content, OK. So. Got it. OK, what happened was like because the first I can, like the first Higurashi reboot, whatever that we, that we were watching way back mm-hmm. in winter, we thought it was just yeah, gonna be uh-huh. twenty four episodes, and then after that last twenty four episodes, they said, "By the way, there's a new season, and that's this thing right now." So we didn't even know uh, that was happening okay. until that very last episode. So got it, because I've only watched like the OG OG the first season so, like, of Higurashi. So I don't know. So, so they can always just oh, fade us gotcha. at the end of the fifth. But when it says fifteen, episode fifteen, mm-hmm. they just fade us again. It's like, oh hey, by the way, there's another season. <laughs> another Higurashi another season coming. You didn't got know about. It. So we'll see. Okay. Hard to say. <laughs> yeah. And then I know um 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 one of our comments company like Neko is also saying how there's a lot of Umi Neko references too. So I don't mm-hmm. know how much that will like be in into this part. So maybe we'll have to like look that up once the season's over. See all the different references. Yeah. So yeah. So that's a bit for Higurashi. Uh, move on to our next show. Let's talk about Remain. He's like, wow, everyone's watching it besides me. Remain looks hey, nice man. so far. I know, Stray, I Stray, Stray, it's my Mappa, right? So, yeah, um, Mappa's Stray, doing their thing. No, no, Stray needs to I... start this off as his, his, his national obligation for the <laughs> national sport of Serbia. <laughs> Sadly, I've only watched one episode, but I really liked it. I thought, like, mm-hmm. the char- like all characters were really likable. Like, their personalities were really were different. They meshed really well, even though the main mm-hmm. character has amnesia. Uh, it but was it's all, not it was even all... annoying. No, no, like how they how they kind of brought it up. I was like, okay, I was like, you have amnesia just enough to for, kind of forget about water polo, but you know, whatever. And then you just kind of move on, like you just move on from that. And then I don't know yeah. what happened the other episode yet since it'll, I haven't. It'll seen be it. interesting to see how they deal with the amnesia in terms of him like rebuilding his water polo mm-hmm. abilities. Uh, admittedly, mm-hmm. this was one of the shows that I was really excited for when I first heard about it, just because. Mm-hmm water polo i don't think has ever been done in an anime format so it's a very fresh space for the sports you know mm-hmm. genre mm-hmm. um but Mappa, the one i right? did see yep yep, yep. okay and w- but the one thing i will say is once i did see the pv like maybe i think the week before it aired and they kind of you know dropped the ball or the insight onto oh the main character has amnesia i was kind of like oh i don't know how, <laughs> how, how, I'm, how i'm gonna feel about this so i think that's the one thing for me is i just want to see how they do deal with the amnesia but to stratton's point all the characters so far that we've been introduced to look fantastic and i'm hoping you know kind of slots into a similar space of you know i don't want to say it because i'm going to raise the bar very high but something along the lines of high q have you <laughs> seen the second episode yet justin mm-hmm. you did see it okay yeah because like i like the fact that they brought in and they showed his body compared to everybody else's and how how they specifically mentioned that like his mut- muscles had atrophied and yep. they were like maybe he'll still have muscle memory and he totally didn't. <laughs> I thought it was Oh damn, he did not. Yeah. Oh shit. And and yeah. there's one other moment where he has the potential to through something he does where it's like, oh, he may like remember all his memories of water polo and uh, good yes. thing that doesn't happen. So oh, I was worried. I was like, please, please don't do this. Please don't do this. Like make it meaningful <laughs> no, for no, him right, to right, have right. amnesia in the first place. First, yeah. first of all, with with certain's thing about like uh with his memory loss, it affected just his water, water polo, like I, I like how they actually made it affect his entire three years that he was that in the polo, yeah, whatever. That's not true. just his water polo skills, right? Yep. So yeah. that that makes it's more fine. realistic. I, the only th- uh, I just meant in the time limit of that he knew water that he, that he was like in like frame. basically for water polo. Oh, I just right, meant like right. for that that little time that little piece of time. <laughs> right. Sorry, Drew. Go ahead. No, no, that's good. And then like with how they put together the accident, like I thought it was pretty nice how they kind of made it uh, like kind of humorous as to how they approached the the accidents, and then. Uh, also, with the fact that, like, you know, the mom is at fault, but it wasn't due to like, uh, like ne- negligence. It wasn't or whatever. her. Yeah. yeah, it was just an accident. So, 
Yeah. Uh, I thought that was pretty nice. And then mm -hmm. with the whole like muscle memory thing, like I'm glad that they didn't just magically give him his abilities mm -hmm. back. But but I do feel like you know uh, with muscle memory, hopefully like as he plays more, he'll slowly unlock mm -hmm. his hidden potential. Mm -hmm. I hope that's still a thing because I, yeah. I I guess yeah. I'm a sucker for that kind of. I thing, think that's I a real good point that you bring up, Koo, is like how yeah. quickly he progresses. I think right. that's a big thing for me too. Now that you mentioned that, is like hopefully they hit the balance right because they don't mm -hmm. want to be too slow and a drag kind of like what you guys mm -hmm. had with a uh, Kabaddi from last season where it seemed like mm -hmm. that show just took a really long time to get into it. Uh, no, no, Kabaddi was, was just fine. it just ended at a weird spot, but I think mm -hmm. the pacing for Kabaddi was fine. Okay. Uh, yeah. Just, uh, sorry, there was a uh, one issue I had with like the with the accident at the time was there was anybody else injured in his family or was it just him? Uh, just they, him apparently. Okay. I think he was I mean, just the he, only. He, I think he, they were still yeah, He got like the brunt of it. Yeah. Obviously, with where the truck connected, but right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, his sister has PTSD now of the accident. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's uh, right. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind. think it's like crippling. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It seemed like it was pretty crippling in the first episode for her. <laughs> no, for for him, yeah, but for, for her, or well, I, she guess, I guess maybe... with like night frights, you know, like yeah, night... yeah, maybe she had ex, uh, but she didn't have it as bad as him, I guess. So I, I guess we won't, we don't really know because they didn't okay. really say. But maybe they'll go into it. Maybe. Yeah. I, so overall, I think it just seems like a really promising show. Honestly, this is probably the first sports anime for a while that I've gotten really excited about. I was so excited for Bakuten, and that was like if you compare the first. In second episodes of each of these two shows, that's like night and day. Like this show is just, it, it just fixes all the problems I had with Bakuten. So, so this is the one that should have got the movie, not Bakuten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They should also made this show also made the the scenery just like in Serbia for <laughs> for uh, remain. Yeah, Ma I didn't know that opportunity missed. Serbia. Yep. Uh, although uh, the only thing I'm curious about is the whole remain. Like, why is it called remain? Because they gave you a uh, well, they told you about the rule, right? Yeah, it's a rule. Right. It's a rule in it. But, but why would you name it the show after that? That's that's what I'm interested about. It's gonna come into effect, cool. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm not a water, I don't play water we polo. So, I don't know right? anything, yeah. so we'll we'll see, right? I can but tell you that, all that, that's what that's what's got my interest. Oh yeah, yeah. let me uh, let me just uh, disconnect real quick. Yeah. Be your country <laughs> proud. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Glad to see more sports shows, you know. I think good ones. Good sports like, yeah, shows. Yeah, good sports like, shows. Good feels like there's, there's always like one per season. Like, I feel like every season gone by, there's always, you guys are always watching, like, a sports uh, show. Now there, I am. There usually is. I think there usually is one, but it's not always good, though. So, okay. <laughs> uh, see, I, went, point. I went so long with no, with no sports anime. Now I'm watching one every season, at least. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I got nothing else. Okay. So I guess that's it for a remain, then. On to our next show, uh, talk about Standing on a Million Lives season two. I know dude. you guys, you guys are surprised that actually cast second season. Oh my god, dude, this dude. episode was good. <laughs> I felt so bad for yeah. Kavala and uh, the MC, but dude, Kavala, yeah. oh my god, dude, I was I almost shed a tear, <laughs> dude. I almost shed a tear. I was, I was dead tired when I was watching this episode and I was tearing. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh they have dude like that you find out the time like uh like the speed of like the time is elapsing and the the, the girl that I thought was like okay this has gotta be like the main waifu fucking mm -hmm. fifteen years go by she's married has or I don't know about married but she has kids she's missing a hand and then, then she basically like admits to him like you know you know basically he was the one I was like this is terrible this is like <laughs> this is a tragedy you were like I was hoping for the ship last season bro yeah. like, oh my god yeah. why did it come back to this and then they continued it right because she still says that you know she kissed the guy during the sunrise and she said she she confessed that 15 years ago she did love him and uh and that that got the guy thinking that got him in his feels like like why are we doing these things like are these like once in a lifetime quests how does that work dude holy shit <laughs> oh man makes you wonder man yeah, like they're going, wonder. they're going way into depth, kind of like with certain things with, or not, I shouldn't say way into depth, but a lot of things kind of uh, in depth, and I guess in other isekais they have not done, just with the kind of how they get into this world, like the, even like the, the only thing that I wish they would have maybe done is uh, before they may have done this uh, uh, recap episode because I forgot what happened uh, initially, but it eventually kicked uh, in, and I remembered that you know the, it ended with that the new party member coming in with the, uh, the, the spear warrior. Yeah, with this. Well, I didn't. Yeah, with the the blonde dude, and kind of like oh, yeah. getting his story, which is mm -hmm. also kind of you know, not very uh, 
that uh, wasn't wasn't very positive. Right, but then I don't think you. It, it doesn't sound like they they did that much of a time skip. It looks like they just went right. Like they started out the in the game. Show. In, in game, there's a time skip. Right in the game, but the, like from from when they came back to life and then how they ended the last season oh, with yeah. like the yeah. question he got from the uh, the GM or the the creator <laughs> yeah. or whatever. Well, GM. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't look like there was any time skip between that, so they're just continuing the story apparently. Yeah, or we'll call him DM. We'll call him the Dungeon Master. Mm. I, I yeah, was mention a... real quick that um because this is a manga, whereas like a lot of isekais are light novels, which came from web novels. So mm. this guy, the author, probably might be writing. He's he, he might be trying to like subvert a lot of the. The tropes because like he knows where it comes from from the light novel it's good yeah so, like, like and also like you know pacing and mangas are way different because usually they're monthly whereas like light novels like you have a whole bunch of things happen in a volume that lasts for like three or four episodes so yeah it's, i'm, I'm it, curious about the show i might just pick it back up again yeah man like there was like uh there was maybe some kind of dull moments in the first season but it, it, it started picking up i think it started being important. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, even the beginning, just because of like just the premise of the show, what they just what they were doing, mm. and then this first episode was just oh my god, <laughs> but a bunch of bullshit. Because I I think me and Ku are both like, all right, this is the waifu, and then yeah, well, I mean she's still waifu. <laughs> but, Sadly, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all of her issues she had, like where she was, uh, where I think we were relating her to darkness. She mm-hmm. got she actually matured and became. Uh, she was awesome. And yeah, uh, I, she, felt, she, I felt bad for the MC, man. Yeah, she she aged beautifully. You yeah. Know? So, yes. um, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, yeah and then, like, pacing it seems pretty nice, too. They didn't just, like, get caught up on that. They're moving on with their quests, so. Yes. Um, yeah, if, if people are needing an isekai that's different from the other, from a lot of the other isekai tropes, uh, I would, I would, re- I would recommend this one to give this one a shot. This is the second season, though, so there is already a first season out. I mean, uh, I feel like a lot of people. Justin, if you have any interest, yeah, Justin, I don't know if you have any interest in any Isekais, but this is a, a good one. Yeah, yeah I'd be looking into it. This. My yeah. my plate's a little lighter this season, so that's why I bring it up. <laughs> is it is it etchy at all? No. Uh, like it's maybe it's, very slightly, but that's no, it's very barely, slightly. barely. Is it more comedy it, or drama? Oh, comedy. Well, actually, well, it's, it's a mix. Was, comedy yeah. and then like drama in a sense. When like, you start later finding on. out more, yeah. When you find yeah. start out finding out more about the world and just kind of everything, you it goes more drama. Hmm. I mean, the way you guys are describing it, it actually sounds pretty decent. It's not bad at all. Yeah. I, it, it, I'm hoping if you know this first, if this first episode, it, I hope it just continues to get better. I hope it, mm. it just doesn't start off strong and diminishes into yes. nothingness. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't do not want that for another season or another show. I should say. Mm. But I'm I, I, I'm hyped. Yeah, you make it sound okay. I I think I will uh, catch up from season one and try to catch up. To nice, this. nice. So hopefully, I can be with you in this discussion episode when it happens. Yeah, kind of a, a really dumb thing, but this. But currently, this is that's my most hyped show of the season. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <Is it> really? <laughs> I haven't watched many shows though. I haven't watched many shows yet. Oh, okay. I wouldn't so, say it. I wouldn't say that, but yeah. So well, when you find out my the rest of my list, David, you will see. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, well that's gonna be a first day of my life, season two. So let's move on to a slime slime tenche. Do oh, we should know the I? Uh, I mean, I think most of us we skipped the spinoff from last season. Oh, absolutely, yeah, I, I did. Yeah, I, I, I hate I didn't, I didn't the comedy it. in the show. So actually, this aired already. I didn't watch the first season yet. The first episode, yeah, I mean, so you know, it's just as good as the last season. Not good. It's not good. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not bad. Like, cool. Don't you it's, dare. It's okay for being mainstream. It's okay. I don't know if if it being mainstream, I, I I would expect better. I mean, but then again, we're comparing it to Sword Art. <laughs> the right. main I mean, like, Sword Art. Like, I don't know. Like, oh nah, god, when I, I think of I, mainstream I, Isekai, even though I, fucking Sword Art. Sorry, go I, ahead, think, cool. I think in the beginning we did right, but then I I want to say like once Rimuru. Uh, figured out he had to be the demon lord. I think from that, like that arc on, like it, it drew me back in. Uh, yeah, so as of right now, me. I think it's in it's in, it's in a good spot right now for me. And but, they they brought back Shion, so you know I can't really complain, right? You bring back time, the waifu. It's like, it's like there's still a lot of isekai tropes that people don't like. So like it's for me, true, it's like it's true. it's barely up, it's barely hanging in there for me because again the, the demon lord stuff. Got me back interested too, but it's it's barely there. Like I still like if you're on the fence of this, I can't recommend you jumping back in if you 
already didn't like time show so, so there's two episodes out there's at least one i think i don't know there's two two is there two uh i think that's right now there's only one which Sean's back oh right the purple girl right. <laughs> big tits <laughs> ogre one horn yes 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 how can i yes. forget uh yeah and her cooking doesn't suck yeah thank god right She's even actually though, a waifu now. Even though I would never eat that garbage. Holy shit. What a stupid ability. <laughs> I mean, in all honesty, it was her saving grace, man. Oh, my God. Oh, hurt. God. All right, so her ability, David, is... Uh, you know how you know how each character, they just they get some sort of ability that we don't know about yet? So oh, Shion's gosh. ability... Okay, well, anyway, well, she, you know, when everybody like upgraded when he became a demon lord. Anyway, when Shion got this ability, um, her, her basically her ability is... When she cooks, it tastes as good as she believes it. So even if it looks like a piling heap of poison, it mm-hmm. tastes amazing, apparently. Okay. And I mean, yeah. I guess she's strong yeah. enough already, and she already had, Rumi already had a bunch of OP people around him, so I guess she doesn't need any other oh, yeah. ability. And, yeah. and more OP people, considering that he now has the dragon as like a, me- like as like a, a member of his oh, party. Yeah. Um, it's, uh... it's his Nakama now. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, that's just my god. You can't get more, like, it just keeps getting more OP. But in general, it's like it's like the same as always. So I mean, if you enjoyed Absolutely. it, good for you. But like, if you if you were enjoying it, then I can't recommend you jumping back in. So. Yeah, yeah. If, if you just want an isekai where you really don't want any drama, you don't want any kind of tension, you just want OP, you just want some OP stuff happening. This is your show. Although I gotta say, about broken characters. <laughs> I gotta say though, if if you're like getting into anime, I would probably recommend this to people just getting to anime. Really? Really? Yeah, because mm-hmm. it's it's there's like a little bit of everything, you know. There's really not much that you have to pay attention to. Do you like a character? Do you like this character? I mean, do you like a little action? I don't know. I mean, that's I mean, the bar I mean, low, you, and you can only go up from there. Okay. <laughs> you can only go from there. But, like but, but, honestly, yeah. If you want a character that, if you want a show that's like that, where it's just mind numbing, where it's and you just want to just see like OP stuff, do one, do just do One Punch Man. It's. I think one Punch Man. Better. No, no, no. One Punch Man is an acquired taste for sure. What are you talking? It's just broken. It's, mean, it's just one broken know. character I, I, I beating everything else. So but at like least, so at mainstream. least, Rimuru or like. El- like, at least slime when... has like a story attached to it right that that Barely. looks like they, they took some thought into making it but with one punch <laughs> man but like uh, when one punch man I mean... came out it's like it's like the show that you recommend like, your normal friends to who like are sort of interested in anime like yeah so, or one i guess it's is way more mainstream than like any i don't know no. i don't know how much i would recommend isekai to someone new to anime because there's a lot of tropes that would bother a lot of people no, because that's that's, that's the thing. That's the thing. Like, with, with, if you go over season one or whatever, they they just throw you into it, and then it doesn't really focus too much on the fact that he was isekai there, uh, or whatever. It's it's just it's it's not it's not convoluted at all. It's just like in a sense, in the beginning, it was kind of like slice of life, and the guy was just telling you about oh how I built the city, I can make potions now. I'm a slime. I made friends. You know, blah blah blah. And then, although there is some fan service, there it's it's really like Terrible. easy to watch and just just enjoy, right? Mm. So okay. I don't mm-hmm. know. I, gonna, I would recommend it to new. I'm a so. I'm a disagree with that, but we'll just leave Same. it here for now. So. <laughs> and then One Punch Man again. It's more of a meme anime. You know, honestly, it's mainstream. It's, I I would consider more meme ish, but mainstream. I mean, it's whatever. But, so yeah, that's gonna be that it was for, just one example. <laughs> so that's gonna be it for Slime Tensei. Season two, part oh. two, I guess. Move on to our next show. This is uh, the Isekai. Okay, I'm gonna talk about um how a realist hero built we built a kingdom. This is the one Isekai that I'm really excited for because this one it's like it's like a regular guy, but it's it's basically like fighting civilization in this Isekai where he has to he, he doesn't have any OP powers, he's just a regular person, but like he has to like take control of he's already taking control of like this kingdom's like finances to to pay repay like um repay like their debt to like this the other imperial kingdom so a lot of like you know a lot like uh ec- economics and politics going on here so i really enjoy that so i'm really excited for for this show i mean I hear, yeah I, I like it so far did i hear politics yes. politics all right but it's not boring politics well, it's the, actually the, the, the like diplomacy. quick and to the point diplomacy yeah, it's, I'll, I'll say but it's not dry right? it's, okay, not, it's not, not lock like lock horizon. dry it's not like lock horizon where it's really convoluted it's 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 like it's like civilization like diplomacy like he's trying to nice he's, he has to play nice with like the the, the bigger the, the imperial kingdom so obviously being a smaller weaker kingdom yes he's trying to work away around that the first episode where he's 
like he's taking the waste from like the like the kingdom that the kingdom has and like he sold off a bunch of their jewels so that he can like gain, gain all this money and then and, and then the first thing and then everyone's like oh we're gonna use that money to pay off the debt right away they're like nope we're gonna use this to invest to make more money there on so we can start like investing in other things so it's a very very like a lot of those like those pc strategy games like i say civilization okay. so yeah, i'll be interested to see how you guys like it as it develops because I, mean, I was I was immediately interested of why you know David you had picked up the show in the first place because I saw I think you and Desmond were the ones that were talking about it in the Discord. Like, so I was because I saw I, I mean I just I was very interested from like the title and summary, and I saw this as a web novel a long time ago. So mm. like, I already, I already saw this as something that like I was already interested to, and then when it became an anime, I was like, okay, I'll just wait till the anime comes out. Yeah, I'm definitely um, intrigued as you said by the economical focus of things because i think I, there I, aren't too I, many shows that do that well either you only yeah, have like I, maybe spice and wolf and spice then and wolf, uh yeah, that Ma, one like devil mao sama yeah Ma Yu. Yep. Yep. Ma Yu. exactly yep. uh and then also because yeah because this guy is just a regular guy he has no powers there's no cheat ability where he can just magically make like he, he can't like he can't make money up here out of nowhere he can't like he doesn't control people or anything mm. he can't like he can't like have this infant resource so it's it's like it's like the opposite of slime tensei we're talking about how like rimuru he just like eats a bunch of crystals and get free money or like make free potions. <laughs> this guy, like, you know, he's just a regular person. So like this is like what I wanted instead of like Slime Tensei, instead of like a cheat. Rimu Rimu is like playing Sims with like cheat codes. This is like this is like actual civilization. So Got it. Sorry. Right. I, I I pass on both. So I'm I'm really this enjoying I'm really enjoying this. And so yeah. So nice. this is like the Isekai that I'm most looking forward to this season. Uh, so right now, I would actually tell you to give it a shot. At least watch the first episode. Like, 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 like seriously, it's <laughs> it's not that bad. It, it's it's I mean, it's it's good. I I would want to say it's it's just good. Oh man! If yeah, you don't, don't like know. the first episode, then yeah, it's not for you. But I already watched Lock Horizon. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, Horizon. This is this is not like it's this less, is I nowhere near Lock Horizon. Lock Horizon. Too, so. yeah. It's way less kind of than Lock Horizon. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'll say this for anyone else today. This is not really isekai. It's, it's yeah, it's just like it's just strategy game. Like. R L. Uh, well, in there's a, only been there's isekai. only been two episodes, so we don't know yet. But it looks like yeah, isekai was just a premise, uh, uh, to to get him there, and then once he made it to another world, it's just gonna focus on yeah the whole diplomacy aspect. So maybe I'll look at it. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. So who knows? Yeah. So yeah. So Justin, if you were on the fence, I definitely recommend you. Like, awesome. Does it yeah, have wife? I'll please. definitely check it out. Um, there's, I mean, he's like, he's, yes, he's like, was it, he has a fiance already, but like, we'll see if they actually get married. And then it sounds like they're set up, trying to set up like, like a harm for him, but like, it's not, it's not the focus of the show. So that's a good thing for me. So it's like, the third uh, harm. like they're already in, so they're already in something yet. They still have a harm. Let's, let's just, let's just be fair. Uh, be real. Right. It's, it's Japanese. It's an anime. He's been, it's a kite. He's going to have a harem. He's also the king. And it looks like it's, uh, it's kind of like a normal thing there to be married to you know multiple well, ladies. It's, so it's, it's the royal, it's, it's the it's the royalty like like political game, right? But like I, mm. I'm pretty sure he's got like at least four coming his way. You know, so. <laughs> yeah, we'll right see. On. But but it's not about it's not about that. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so okay. that's, yeah, yeah. So that's that's like my my number one recommended isekai of the show because there's a lot. So that is the one I definitely recommend of all. That's it for how the realist hero built you built a kingdom. Um let's talk about uh remake our life or Bokutachi no remake. Oh, this is one for me that's a, a top contender, I think, for you know, shows that I'm hyped about. Um if I had to like just quickly summarize what this show is going to be about, it's almost like if you take re life and um you always got rummage in real life. Right? And the uh the pet girl of um Sakura So, oh, which Sakura aired so, like a few yeah. years ago. Um, and, and mainly that latter show, basically because of the content that they focus on of like game development and like art and design and type of things. But um, specifically what Bokutachi no Remake focuses on is uh, we get introduced to uh, a main character, uh, Hashiba, who is a 28-year-old video game developer. But as we kind of quickly learn in his uh, current life, things aren't going the greatest. He's company's just gone bankrupt. Things aren't going well for him. He's moved back home. And as he come comes home, he thinks about a choice that he had earlier in his life to take the safe route and go to a school for like economics and, and other kind of more tame 
I guess, degrees or an art school that he ended up getting into back then and decided not to take it because he was afraid that, you know, things might not work out. And the unique instance of this show is that he's now being given a second chance to go back and see what life like would be life. like if he went to art school. So um, the great thing for this is the first episode is a full hour long, which I think is really great. I'm happy to see more and more shows doing this because I think it does a really good job of setting the plot, you know, setting characters and everything to really draw you in. Where like sometimes in 20 minutes, you have to cram a lot of that in to try to really buy a viewer in. But with an hour, it, it's much more digestible. And I think it's something that was another reason for me that I liked the first episode so much. I mean, I feel like from this point on, any anime show that's kind of like story driven, they should be an hour long, like for the first episode, mm -hmm. because it totally just draws you in. And like, you already have a sense of what the world is going to be like, what the plot's going to be like, and what you're getting yourself into. And the fact that you don't have to wait to kind of like, for, for them to just grab your attention, like it's I think it's really great. I mean, um, I feel like if if anime is if they, I think every anime wanted to be an hour long if they, if they could i just think there's more to it no but if you're story driven like i i feel like you you would need the hour like it would do it would do your like your show so much service but if yeah. you're like a sport anime or if you're like a like you know comedy or whatever uh where uh it's not the case and then yeah i don't think an hour is going to help you at all it might just make it worse to be honest well it, it's definitely to your point david like obviously there's some other factors that go into the shows that do get an hour because we have a show like this like who's saying from a very story focused perspective i think it was a really good decision but then you have you know the devil or the de the detective is already dead which oh also my, got an oh, hour well, but it didn't you. really do it really didn't oh, do much with yeah. that whole hour as convoluted as mm. it was so um a little double edged sword, but nonetheless hey if you can get more time in your first episode i mean it, i mean it, it costs, gives you so much more opportunity because like, they're taking out a time slot so it costs more money what the decision happens for that so but it's like again just basically just cost more money to take another time slot so if if studios wanted i'm pretty sure a lot of studios want an, an hour but they can't because you know other reasons i don't mm -hmm. yeah I, I think the other thing that this show will really have going for it that I know a lot of shows in this genre have kind of done similarly is just, you know, giving that scenario of if you could do something different, would you do it? And, and what would kind of come from that? I think, you know, a lot of people probably find themselves in the shoes of this character where they're maybe in a career path that they didn't really feel passionate about or think they would end up in. And you kind of always have these things in the back of your head of like, oh, what if I did this differently or what if I had taken this route? And it's always fun to see these things. And also, I think there's going to be a lot of feels as well, because I'm sure I think, I think not everything more, is going to go his way at the end of the day. I guess I think it's more feels because I think I don't know. I don't know how I feel about like, like, because a lot of times, like, like you, you, you try to take a lesson from this. It's like you can't really take back the decisions you made. So I think it's more of like, mm -hmm. I feel like more shows should be more about the fact that like you had to do you got to um accept what you did and just move on. I feel like it's just like it's just like i don't know so like just pandering to people who had regrets made and just like and just having this fantasy of like wanting to redo things i don't know mm -hmm. like but besides that no I definitely think, so but otherwise like i think i will i haven't seen this show yet but i think i'll pick it up i was, I was interested anyway so i feel like so you I'm would enjoy it i'm interested to see where it goes and then yeah i, I guess like instead of the beginning how he had to choose between like the safe school and the art school like i guess that's like I guess I mean yeah, yeah. I was thinking about to, to real life where I guess he he we did this. I well, it wasn't his high school though. It was like it was like he was high school. I guess it's similar to real life. Then yeah, we're I think a different path. So so that's gonna be uh, it for. Oh well, go ahead. Yeah. You have to think of... Oh no, like I said, uh yeah, and then with episode two, the way uh they ended episode two, I can kind of see where this is gonna go to be honest. But I'll I'll just leave it at that. Okay. I think I know what he's talking about, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. We shall see. So we'll do that for book touching a remake. On to the next show. Um, I'm going to briefly mention Manoka Record Season 2, because that's airing this season. Although it's, it's airing July 31st, so it's like way later. Oh, wow. So, way out there. Yeah, so I'll have to remember when it actually airs, because like, it's way later. Um, so this is, like, this is a spin-off. It's based off the mobile game. Um, this is an alternate universe to Manoka, so... It's not the, I guess, yeah, it's nothing to do with, like, the, the mainline Monica or anything or anything in the movies. So it's, like, it's, new, it's this new new character, uh, uh, Iroha. She, uh, she's the main thing. Is, in the first season, she was looking for her sister because it just disappeared. And she thinks, like, a witch had something to do with it. So, so she's meeting with this new crew of other people. 
of other witches. That's like, and I guess they're, they're doing other stuff, other things along the way while trying to trying to find like her sister. But basically, like season two, is she's still trying to find her sister. So, mm-hmm. um, so I'll say like I know like some people don't like this spinoff as much because it didn't really it doesn't connect to the main story, and I guess like it's not like, I guess it's not as much shocking moments as it was in original Monica. But overall, it's, it's just like a general like I don't know, like just action series. I I mean I like the animation is still pretty good for like a lot of the fight scenes. So I, I, that's what I enjoy the most, or not the most, but I, I enjoy that a lot from Madoka. So if you're interested in more Madoka, like I'd say it's fine. Just just don't expect anything as good as the original. I'll have for yeah for for Magica record part two coming up way later. So look forward to that. If anyone is interested in, in Madoka, so that's all I mentioned for that. Um, so let me move on to the next show. Uh, actually, I'll just briefly mention. I I saw I saw the summary. I saw this uh, battle game in in five seconds. Like. Honestly, like the more I look at it, the more generic it looks. But I'm I'll just give at least give it a try because it hasn't aired yet. But it kind of reminds me of like I don't know if it's like a battle royale or not. But they the um like this this high schooler he like he gets dragged into this game and you have to to get powers and it just says you have to like yeah win a game and destroy an organization. So really really generic. But I haven't seen I. There's usually one of these every season or every other season. I haven't watched them in a while, so it's just give it a try. But it sounds pretty generic, so that's all I'll say for Battle Game in five seconds. You don't have to worry about it. And then uh, let's do the next show. Um, this is a Mappa show. Uh, the out of ten deities only no piece. I know nothing about this show. I just know that it's made by Mappa, so it should give me a try. But that's literally all I know, too. I have it on my list, but it hasn't aired yet. And I, I can't even remember what the synopsis is, to be honest. Right, I'm trying to look for it right now. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. And I think it's based off of manga, too. I think so, too. I mean, if it's by Mappa, it's got to be good, right? It looks it looks like it really the, looks. The art style cool definitely looks interesting. Other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. So, 800 years since the battle gods Ida Ten um, contained the demons, let the world to ruin after first battle. The battle is now just a mystic tale. Um, Someone revived the demons from long sleep. So oh, it's a battle royale. A, no rule, no limit. Through a battle royale. So <laughs> the battle royale manga by Mappa. So oh, we'll fighting your favorite Taylor. Well, I I I I added it because it's Mappa and because the main MC is voiced by the same person that does Edward Elric. So I was like, "That's those are good enough reasons for me. I'll give it a shot." Old. <laughs> there it is. So oh, we'll see how this goes. I I like yeah. I I didn't know this until Taylor mentioned it. I didn't hear anything about this at all anywhere else. Mm. I don't know how popular this will be, but we will see. Yep. Total total uh guessing game. I guess that's all I've mentioned for our out of tens. Yeah. Move on to uh next show. Um Strider, you wanna talk a little about uh Kobayashi Maid Dragon second season? Well, I watched the first episode so far. Uh you can just you can just tell it it, it, it kind of feels bad, but you can tell it it, it, it just looks and feels different mm. from what it was before. Mm. Um because it, it is uh Kyo animation. And we kinda know what happened with that. It's uh I, they introduced a new character, and I just, it's just a terrible character. It's basically, oh, it, it, it's a lowly character that has just, uh, uh, just unbelievably huge assets. And it's just, it's just it, to the point where it's not, it's not even funny. It's just, it's just bad. Like, it just looks bad. Uh, so I don't, oh, is it like that one girl from uh, Full Dive? Full Dive. Worse, the, the, way the shop worse. assistant, the, the way, shop owner? way worse oh, because God. she's like half, she's like half as tall as her, and they're like, <laughs> what? And they're like, and they're like that size. Um, yeah. it's bad. Yeah, it's uh, it's so it's just like like certain things like that. I just don't find really funny because it's like when it feels like eighty percent of the main characters have just gigantic. That's, that seems that sounds like really weird because how how wholesome like the show usually. Is. Right. Yeah, uh, I'll tr- I'll try to find uh, I'll try to send uh, so if I find one and just send it to the Discord. But yeah, it, like th- this new character is just terrible looking. So I, it, and then it was uh, what was that? There was, there was like the they did like a random animation fight that looked nice. I already completely forgot what the fight was about. But I mean, it's like really, if you like the first season of Kobayashi, you'd probably like the the second season of this. It, it has kind of like the same kind of tones. It just feel it just feels and looks differently for it than from. The first season, and I really just can't put like my finger on like why. Is it still a killed animation. 
it's still here animation yeah but it just feels different like it just uh, like something about it just looks different I mean, like because the first season was just very colorful like it, it, it this is still kind of colorful I mean, where they, the, it, the, the sad part might be it might be new people having to work on Kobayashi. oh yeah that, that was yeah that was kind of like my whole point at the beginning of this part where I, I'm, I'm sure it's just a bunch of people having to fill in and they're not at, i'm sure they're just not at that point they don't have that art style and mm-hmm. it's just kind of uh, trying to just stick with the Kyoto, you know, Kyoto animation, and everybody knows it. But it's, uh, it's like still, like I'm sure it'll pro- it'll be better. It was just kind of a, I just felt like a really weird um, first season for, uh, or for, sorry, first episode for a second season. It kind of just uh, kind of threw you in there, and also the first season was forever ago, and I forgot a lot of stuff that happened. And also don't remember any of the characters' names, the names besides like the two, Kobayashi. like three main, yeah, besides Kobayashi, <laughs> Kana, and then like the, I was going to say the other MC girl, but I don't even remember her name. <laughs> so. Dragon girl? You don't even remember her name? No, no. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. I had a, I had it backwards. She's Kobayashi. Toru. <laughs> <laughs> so I got oh, it down. Um, but I'm still going to watch it, though. Like, it's like, because I've actually, perf- like, Previously, like the comedy in the show, I like the story, I like the like the drama, the serious moments that they had. They, they they did that all very well, but it's just this. I don't know this new introduction or this new intro intro to this character. Who it could it could really uh kind of uh plummet for me. So we'll see. Yeah. Uh, I guess that'll be it for Kobayashi May Dragon. Heard from Stren. Uh, I'm sure, like I said, I'm sure it'll recover. It is Kyoto Animation. It's 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 a uh, it's it's Kobayashi. I think it'll be fine. All right, yep. let's move on to our next show. Uh, let's talk about the Ultima game season two. I guess this is the was it My Life as a Villainess, whatever. I forgot the full title, but I Close I, re- I reincarnate as like a uh, enough, yeah. as a villainess in an Ultima game, something like that. This is season two. All paths lead to Doom. I think. But, yeah, the all paths lead to Doom. Mm. Cool, yeah, are you watching season this? two. No, I saw the name. Oh. <laughs> okay. This yeah. show is continuing exactly in the same spirit as the first season. It doesn't feel like they skipped a beat. <laughs> it's still, in my opinion, very mid. <laughs> Either uh, like say, it or you won't if you saw the first one. The first episode, like, I, I thought it was just really boring. Like, compared yep. to what, like, because there's at least the first season, there was parts of it that was actually interesting to see. Because I re- actually like uh, Henry's character. This first episode was just like really boring for me, and I I ended up just like skipping through a lot. So I don't know how much well, I'm gonna I keep watching from the show. I might drop this. Well, this first episode made me feel like it was almost like they it, was, it was like they wanted to do like an intro episode where or like kind of or a recap to remind us of all these characters. That's what it felt like. So I won't be too hard on this episode, but we'll see how the second episode goes. Um, yeah, I think my problem. <laughs> okay. the, the only other thing I was gonna say is just like I never liked Katarina's character, so I think that's pretty. Uh, I think she's just so annoying. But like, I could even deal with her being the way that she is if everybody wasn't in love with her. I just can't buy that everybody would be in love with her. <laughs> like, it's just too unrealistic. But well, if you Sounds like somebody's and, jealous, if you want a different yeah, path, <laughs> if you want a different path, though, uh, Taylor, there is a Switch game coming out for this. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm just kidding. It's gonna probably be bad. But well, I'm know. okay. Yeah, it's just gonna be light novel. I'm sure. Or not a light all the, novel. All the novel. guys in this show are so terrible. Like, it's just all such awful choices. Like, there's only two girls that I'd be that I'd find acceptable for her to end up with, and that's it. But anyway, but Alan. Not, Alan's not that bad. He's all right, but I don't really think I don't know. He's all right. Oh, he's the but, only acceptable male. But to back you up, they're all terrible choices. No, uh, not one of them are well, okay. even I'll close. Say, I'll say about this season too. I don't even know what what is the point of like this second season because I thought we already like got rid of the flag. Unless there's, I guess they'll introduce maybe a different death. A flag, new death but, like, flag. But, like she keeps thinking that she's got like yeah, got, gonna die or something from the original game. But we already we deviated enough from the original game so much. Like you, really you should be what's... seeing it in the next episode because I, okay. I, I I I flipped through the manga back in the first season. And okay, you'll you'll see the plot point come up pretty soon. Okay. Here. Otherwise, like yeah, yeah this it, first episode I uh, was not really feeling it. So, well, I mean, it, like, it, like was it Katarina? She's just, just dumb. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's just like, like, it's like how before she just thinks like all these people, like all these things are out to get her, even though she obviously like she's friends with everybody, and she still thinks like, oh, I, I'm in, I'm in danger of a death. Like it's like, it's like okay, man, whatever you say. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I'm only watching this because I watched 
one, and that was from like, <laughs> and that was, like from like that was like from a season where it was barely anything to watch. So like, <sighs> that was like the only saving grace. Oh, I have one more thing to say about it, which uh, both Stratton and I laughed when we watched it. But the bad guy from the previous season, when he shows up and he's like, "I'm in disguise," and his hair was a slightly different shade of red, and that was his only disguise. Slightly <laughs> like, taller too. I was like, "Okay, well, you fooled me, buddy." <laughs> yeah, it, it was uh, David. I don't remember serious. Right serious Deke. Got that um, name. Oh, I forgot oh, about his name. Uh, <laughs> yep. That's a legitimate name, guys. It's not. I'm not trolling or well, anything. You, it's you, it's serious, no, Deke. You, you make fun. You Very creative. Fun I, just, I just keep. Uh-huh. I just keep a serious black, but that's. <laughs> there it is. So, I think I'm just. Get, I'm just saying the actual name, man. Don't yes, don't. I know. Hate. I know. <laughs> I think we're in it there for what to make. <laughs> but that shows how how excited we are for that. Oh uh, yes. The next, I guess, uh, in, for our next one, in Scarlet Nexus. I know most people here, well, think it's a game and don't realize that there's an anime coming with it. But I guess Taylor's interested in watching it, so give us your thoughts. I mean, I'm not going to play the game, so I figured I might as well watch the anime. And, um, I mean, like, it's not bad. There's nothing really wrong with it, to be honest, from the first two episodes that I saw. I feel like some people are going to have issues with some of the CGI. I didn't personally, but I'm more lenient than a lot of people. Um. Mm-hmm. It was all right. The characters were all right. They had personalities. Uh, it's the plot was easily understandable and well explained. Um, I think that the like the the so the, like basically, I don't know what everybody knows about the plot, but basically, it's this society where th- it seems like there are alien type of creatures that are coming in from the lower level atmosphere. And I had a I had quite a few issues with the the creatures. I think that their designs are ridiculous, especially considering that it seems like they're supposed to be like not from the planet they like take on the look of stuff that's on earth like one is like a pot of flowers <laughs> chasing them or something like that a bouquet of flowers I, i'm not even kidding it's really mm-hmm. weird so i really didn't like that at all but it's it's whatever um sounds like an m night M. Night Shyamalan movie it's like you got enemies from like devil may cry or like the bayonetta series yeah, well, it's kind of like well, these well, human that's, um, that's, amorphous that's, that's funny like, you meant that's funny you mentioned that Justin because the gameplay people describe it as anime DMC. So yeah, oh yeah, so, it yeah. definitely looks Pretty, like it. Yeah, well, that's I funny you mentioned that. that. Spot on point of it. But I'll yeah. continue watching the anime. There was nothing about really? it at all that offended me. It just seems a little bit mid. But I I, I was kind of curious about what happened at the end of the second episode. So I mean, I, I liked it more than some other stuff that's out this mm-hmm. season. So we'll see. Oof. Well, I think oh. it's interesting to your point, Taylor. Like you know, for individuals that don't plan on playing the game like Mm -hmm. this anime is probably a a decent round then to get the story in just a different kind of format um but to your point too yeah if you're playing the game then there's probably no real reason for Mm -hmm. you to watch the anime here and and i think the other thing you know to credit the anime is that it is being done by sunrise so it'll probably be a a pretty good looking anime all things yeah it was pretty good looking it was well produced Mm-hmm. Like for so. like all these like Bandai Namco stuff, like for how average a lot of their games are, like they get a lot of really good anime studios. Like like mm-hmm. they always get foldable for Tales of. And yeah, they get Dot they Eater. get the backing. So so like it's it's, it's interesting. Like whether like, or not the story holds up will be a different it's question. But it's gonna they look get, look like they get such top tier <laughs> anime studios for such like average games. I will say this though, I did look at like the character list from the games, and it looks like there's a character that's in the anime that's not in the games, and he is pretty nice. He's the captain of of one of the one of the teams in the anime, and you'd be really missing out, you know, if you just played uh, the game and didn't get to see him. So I'm just gonna missing leave a that potential husband. <laughs> Very <Yeah>. good. <laughs> nice. Those are my thoughts. Okay, that's it for Scarlet Nexus, the anime. Um, on to our next show. Uh. I want to talk about um, Duke of Death. Actually, I'll mention I read the manga a long time ago, so I know a little bit about Runner. it. So I don't know if I'm going to watch this or not, but it's, it's Taylor's interested. So. Yeah, I'm interested. I, I honestly do not know what my thoughts are on this yet from the first two episodes. They're really all over the place. Like, basically, it's about a kid who was like a noble or whatever, and he gets a curse placed on him when he's five years old by a witch. He doesn't remember the circumstances or why it happened to him. He really doesn't know the details. He just remembers her words, which are that he'll never know love and nobody will ever love him and anything he touches will die. And that's exactly what happens. Anything he touches dies. So his family um, exiles him to their one of their separate mansions in the woods. And one of his butlers comes with him and a maid that has been 
like in a family of maids that's worked for for the family for a long time. So he's out there with two people and um, he's in love with the maid and the maid is in love with him. And that's kind of really where the story is at. They're in love with each other, but they can't do anything about it. Well, and um, also like the maid's ahead. always teasing him. So like he's mm-hmm. always like saying like, hey, you want to hug me, master? Or hey, like I got this thing. It's just like a lot, a lot of teasing. A lot of mm-hmm. things, like, what was it like? Like she's always trying, like trying to tease him to like get get her, him to touch her, and he's always like, "No, I can't do that." You know, you gotta die if I do that. So a lot of that like banter going on between the two. That's like the main like mm-hmm. ma- friends of the manga that I read a long time ago. So I feel like I just don't like the banter. I feel like the teasing is kind of forced and over the top. Like it just doesn't feel natural at all. Um, I would say that if you want something that's like teasing, I really think that Nagatoro was like a thousand times better personally. Um, that's more almost like into the bullying category, but still, um, I just, I just don't feel it. And, um, it could really go either way. I, I like, I feel like the, like some of the more serious moments where, you know, he actually is like reflecting on his situation. I actually really like him as a character, but like the etchiness of the show is just really weird. Like, I don't even have a problem with the etchiness. It's just weird. And also, <laughs> this, is not, this is splitting hairs, but I'm really not a fan of the girl's character design. <laughs> and I'm, I'd be curious who is. <laughs> but um, oh, I don't know. So she's like, look like any other normal character. You think so? I think yeah. she looks she looks straight out of the pages of like a super high rated like dojin. You know what I mean? Really? Or like a super, well, super, super explicit dojin. I mean, she looks, way, she looks way different than the guy. The guy looks like really... He's the one yeah. that stands out more, but like the girl's just whatever. She's like any other like <laughs> generic like characters. I don't know. I didn't think much about her. That's fair. I think everybody would have their different opinions. But yeah, those are those are those are my thoughts on it. I'll keep but, watching. I'm curious to see. Yeah. Basically, like I just I just I didn't keep up with the manga because that's all a show was. that's all the manga was. Just like just her teasing him the whole time and he's <laughs> him saying he can't touch her. So was there like ever any story development? <laughs> the, I remember I didn't read, read much. I didn't read much into it, but like I don't. I all I remember was just huh. yeah. It's it just like a long running, just like between those two. That's all I remember. Weird. Feels like it should have more story than that. Felt more but... like more slice of life, more just like just like the mm-hmm. daylight between the two. But maybe maybe they'll do something, uh, or maybe I missed it. I didn't read much. Yeah. Okay. Well, good to know. Well, that's it for. Uh, Duke of Death. Um, go on to next show to uh, Aqua Topes. This is the this is the PA works because we always get like one Ooh. really pretty PA works. But like I'm always curious how they do because like I just I know like a lot of times like the plot like fa- like falls flat and like like it's, yep. it's more. I feel like it's one of those shows that it's way more like style or substance <laughs> where it's, it's pretty look at. But like because I feel like because I feel like this happened a lot with like like plastic memories and glass lip and. I heard on was it the the Nagi no like Asu something like the one of the Asakura. ward people out of the ward people yeah. I heard that one was pretty decent but besides that I just remember just classic memories and glass slips people like that was pretty I didn't read too much so I'm curious what your thoughts about this new one from PA Works I think for me you kind of hit the nail on the head David like this is if anything just gonna be a guilty pleasure where I know it's gonna be beautiful. But I've been burned before with, you know, the stories falling flat with, you know, Glass Lip with, uh, to an extent, Charlotte was another show that they did that just from a story perspective ended up being an absolute train wreck. Um, Although I think and then Charlotte even more recently, more, Charlotte's more on Key and June Maeda than PA Works, but... True, true. But there's this other one called uh, Iroduku, The Colorful World or something like that that PA oh, yeah, Works did, oh, like a few yeah. seasons. That one also very, very pretty, but at the end of the day not the greatest story mm. admittedly so um i i don't think the first episode was bad by any means but it's always in pa works fashion they always come you know hitting out of the gate with these very beautiful looking shows and just for whatever reason they they can't close so hopefully this is something different but as track record show i'm probably gonna get burned <laughs> Well, I'll say this. I haven't seen the other shows that you guys have mentioned. I've heard a lot about them, but I haven't seen them myself. I didn't watch but, any. I just I heard mean, about them. They always end up being mid. They're not like awful, but yeah. they're not anything to write home about. Well, it just seems to me like it sounds like this plot is basically almost like pretty slice of lifey. Like it starts out with the one of the main characters. She had a, she was trying to like work towards what seemed like a dream job in entertainment, and that just didn't pan out for her. And she's feeling really like hopeless and lost. And trying to figure out what she should do with herself now. 
And I kind of like the idea of following that plot line. Like, I like the fact that she's a little bit older than some characters in some shows dealing with more adult themes like that. It seems like a pretty simple concept. I feel like they should be able to nail it. Yeah. But, well, uh, actually, I was just looking and I didn't realize that they have 24 episodes holy for crap. this show, which usually with all those other shows we were mentioning from PA Works, they're either mm -hmm. 12 or 13 episodes. Mm -hmm. So that maybe could be more hope and that they have, you know, more uh, air time, so to speak, to play with. And um, the only other show that I remember from memory that PA Works has had in the 24 episode space is uh, Shirabako, which is like a highly acclaimed oh, show. I didn't realize that was PA Works. Yeah, I, I yeah. didn't watch that because everyone, I mean, people always praise it because like... Oh, that's phenomenal it's, series, it's like, especially like, into the, inside of the anime industry, well, yeah, obviously. Like, <laughs> the art people obviously, of course, like enjoy like getting more insight into the anime industry. Yeah, and the movie for Shirabako is also okay. Really, really good. Wait, you said you watched Shirabako? <laughs> Okay, I'll probably... That was the last PA works so that I was like, damn, this is good okay, stuff. I'll, I'll and then they just put out a bunch of mid. <laughs> pick it up later. Yeah. yeah, I just added it to my list. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Um, so yeah, hopefully, you know, this is one from them where they quote unquote hit gold again. And we're not just getting another mid show at the end of the day. But it'll look really pretty. So if anything, you can hopefully turn your brain off and just be entranced by the wonderful animation that PA works consistently puts out. Yeah. So, so that's it for Aquatope. Uh, move on to our next show, uh, Uromichi Onisan. I heard about this, but I don't know much. I know Threaten so. was was hyping this one up, so I'm interested to hear how was the first uh, episode. The beginning was. To watch it? I don't know. Well, me and Ku already kind of talked about it. Where at the beginning it was, it was like really kind of hammering the like the the point where they they did not like their jobs. Nope. And um, mm. just kind of like the, just what he was saying, or at least like the translations that I was reading, it wasn't it wasn't that funny. Uh, but it became. But I started to laugh when they started when they were introducing more of like the main cast and their personalities. I thought was uh, it reminded it kind of reminded me of uh, God, what what would be like the uh, was it Mister Rogers, but basically everybody hating their job. Um, <laughs> That's a where it just feels like. Yeah, where it's just because they're supposed to go to like this, uh, you know, like there, or maybe even uh, Sesame Street, Studio? maybe. Oh. Um, where they have, where there's just basically a bunch of people who do like a kids show for mm -hmm. live kids there, and then they kind of just do these cheers and stuff like that, and then um, they they just kind of like under their breath, and it's or I, I'm assuming it's oh, under no, their breath, not under their breath. No. You don't think so, dude? I don't because know, the man. The kids, the kids hear them, the kids question them. The kids so do, not but not the, the cameras, but. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like some of those moments, I thought were there. Like the comedy can hit, but there's a lot of misses too. There's also there's also some cringe moments, but I'll let you guys uh, cover the rest. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I don't know. Go, go ahead, Taylor. I'm just mm. well. I was gonna summarize something that you had said to me actually, which was that like your issue with it was kind of that like they're they're actually filming this and that's when he's saying all of this like shady stuff about his job it's all on film and you right. were like i don't like that and when he mentioned it and i thought about it i was like yeah i see what you mean it really should have been just like internal monologue there was absolutely right. no reason for him to say it out loud and also him saying it out loud and the kids responding to it adds nothing to the show like it does right. not make it any funnier and it just definitely makes it more cringe so mm -hmm. then what Stratton was saying where when they introduce the other characters and you see him interacting with them i feel like that's where i also found it more enjoyable and laughed a lot more the stuff where he's actually on set acting is is pretty cringe right you know and, and like certain said at first the first episode i thought i guess there's only been one episode right? or has it been two it's two i've only seen one though. today okay uh, but yeah, like in the first, uh, I guess in the first half of the show, you you kind of thought to yourself, oh, okay, maybe he's just having inner monologues because he's basically on on Japanese's PBS, right? He's Mister <laughs> Rogers or whatever, right? And then uh, when he when he first lets out his inner thoughts, and they do have like a like a quick uh, like tonal shift, which I thought would be like his inner monologue, but uh, the kids start responding to him, saying mm -hmm. like, "Why are you like that? What do you mean, Mister?" <laughs> and I'm just like, "Oh God." <laughs> just is this real is this real life <laughs> and like you just imagine if this was real like how the hell is this guy not fired how is the show mm. not canceled you know but they like i guess the whole cast is just kind of like a bunch of weirdos right the director doesn't seem <laughs> to really care he's kind of like weird as well um and then like his his supporting crew like the support cast um like uh like the, the other guy and then the girl um i forget what it was 
But the guy, the the, the supporting guy, he's kind of like a weirdo in the stuff. Like he found out like a famous artist or a famous uh, actor, or whatever. Like his nickname was Dick, and he couldn't stop laughing <laughs> at the fact that his nickname was Dick. <laughs> And then, like, I was laughing the, so hard during okay. that scene. I don't <laughs> even know why. Yeah. I just lost it. I think because I'm not used and to it. In all honesty, I'm not going to lie. The show sounds kind of funny. Like, <laughs> it's it's funny. It's just where it's like, they're just being yeah. so, like, you know, obvious with their disdain for the job and, you know, interacting with yeah. the kids, which doesn't right, make it, any sense. It, but. It, it's, it's, good his job. It's, it's his life. Like, it's just adulthood. Like, he hates adulthood yeah. and he mm-hmm. can't yeah. cope with it. He hates so now okay. adulthood. Yeah. So yeah, I, I don't know. So like I said, like the, the show's funny, but then like whenever they 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 transition to the scenes where there's kids there and they're talking to the kids, like it's so cringe and so sad that uh, I don't know how to feel. Yeah, you know. But then the other scenes are, are are fine. They're they're hilarious. But yeah, it's 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 weird, man. Like I'm so conflicted with the show. Mm. I don't know. God. Okay. I'll keep watching it. I'll keep. Oh, watching I'm gonna it. keep going. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna keep going. Yeah. But I'm just saying. <laughs> I might get through this episode Ooh. shot. Just. Ooh. I'm yeah, interested it, to see what what what's the balance between funny and cringe here. Yeah, if you want some possible, you know, possible like like a, a really funny show, um, go for it. Yeah, I'm just curious, like, but, see what my thoughts are about this balance between funny and cringe. <laughs> and yeah, the, like the the MC of this show, uh, his uh his voice actor plays that part perfectly. His mm-hmm. voice yeah. actor is Kamiya Hiroshi, known yeah, by he, Levi and all those people. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Very fitting that and he he does oh yeah he, well, he's spot on he's spot on for sure yeah I mean, he does like what, yeah yeah when, when we went like from like watching Noragami and stuff he like he just like his like range I'll of always, like, comedy I'll always remember, or, I'll always remember him as Aragi <laughs> and also that other show too um Taylor what's like the, the dude with the pink hair um Psyche K uh he plays yeah. like yeah oh, he basically Psyche. plays like all those parts oh, he's perfectly Psyche K, too. Psyche K is yeah. perfect that's a good comedy yeah so he like he does he does the part. Perfect. So I, I'm, I'm hoping it. Uh, he's also, better right, he's also um, main character from Arakara Under the Bridge. Mm-hmm. I know, and he did that part perfect too. He's well. But, I mean, there's a reason he's Japan's most famous voice actor. You know. So I just imagine, I just imagine more more cool more cool um, from Arakawa. The yeah. This guy. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I'm thinking this is gonna be my comedy show of the season. Like, like there's uh, like, for every like for every like cringe moment, there's a couple that made me laugh. Mm-hmm. Worth it. Got me curious now. You, you guys have to let me know your thoughts. And if we need to, we'll open up a, a chat in uh, Discord. Yeah. Okay. It took me five minutes, but I cringe. So I'll take that as you want, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Yikes. There it is. Okay. So I guess that's it for Urumichi Onisan. Kami slash cringe show. So on to our next <laughs> show. Uh, I guess we mentioned Nighthead 2041. I have no idea what the show is. I just saw cover art and <laughs> summary and. That looks interesting, but I don't know. The the story follows the Kirihara brothers who form who from a young age were incarcerated in an obscure scientific facility due to their supernatural powers having escaped after the barrier that was preventing preventing them malfunctions. The story also follows the Kuroki brothers who are trying to chase the Kirihara brothers, and that is it for the summary. Hmm. Not I mean, a lot to go off of. It looks sci-fi, so I'd be interested. Mm-hmm. But besides that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just a huge sucker for cyberpunk, and I get some <laughs> cyberpunk esque vibes from this type of show. So that's what drew me in. Um, Only 2041, Justin. Though we're not to 2077 yet. I know. Yet. I know. Right. <laughs> the source says other. I wonder where it came from. Yeah. Oh yeah. What's this other? Hmm. It might be. Is it novel? Maybe I don't know. Because um, yeah, so. the, the other the other show that you watched the um, what was it? The gang one. The what was it called again? The uh. Oh, that's the one uh, I dropped. I remember. Um, uh, oh, IWGP. Mm-hmm. IW, it was Ikebukuro Westgate Park. Westgate oh, Park. Yeah. yeah, that, that one. Yeah. That was based off a novel. So hmm. I don't know what it is. It looks like other... this is based on. It's based on a 1992 Japanese television drama series called Nighthead. Oh, okay. Lord. Okay. Interesting. So rare case of it's based off of a live action. Interesting. <laughs> uh, that's oh, because God. of because the, the anime the anime movie um, Fireworks that was also based off this drama. So that, oh, so hmm. interesting. This face out drama. So we'll see. I just I see it's yeah. I just see it's sci-fi. So I'm curious mm-hmm. to see yeah. what it, sci-fi is. It's it's it other. So sci-fi we'll is supernatural. I added yeah. it just for those two reasons. We'll yeah. see how I'm, it goes. I'm curious. But we'll see. Same. I think if anything, I'll just have to wait and see. Also, how the animation style holds up because it is kind of like that blended CG. 
mm-hmm. my style. Shiro, so Shiro Gumi, I have no idea who they are. And looking at yeah. the list, they have things they've they made, done. They made a bunch of Draymon <laughs> stuff and other random stuff. Yeah, yeah, this is just a so, random studio. Okay, <laughs> we'll have to see. You know, maybe yeah. they could be uh, question mark for the now. hidden gem. <laughs> yeah, it's a question but, yeah. mark. Don't have don't have enough to go off of. Yep. So I guess that's the all I mentioned for Nighthead twenty forty one. Uh, move on to the next show. Um, I guess I just I briefly just added this in because there's another isekai. I only mention this because um, so this is Suki Suki Michi um Moonlight Fantasy. Um, this one I actually read the web novel a long like a while back, like a couple years back. So I read like 200 plus chapters of this web novel, so I know a lot is gonna happen here. Oh so, my oh, god! Really? Wow. Yeah. So I so I could actually, watch it. I saw the first episode and I, and I do like it. So. I could I could watch it, but it's like I already know what's gonna happen. So it's kinda of, it's kinda of like right. Death March. Like I read like two hundred chapters of Death March and ended up watching the anime. So Okay. Uh, well from a guy who hasn't read the manga or web novel, uh I, I I think it's actually a refreshing take on Isekai. It's it's nothing out of the ordinary, but I do like the MC. He's not like a complete uh like chicken. But yeah. he's also not like overpowered in a sense. I mean, I guess he kind of is, mean, but like he doesn't Seta have that too, mental fortitude. He's not overpowered. He he's pretty overpowered, like especially later on. I mean, I don't know. Like from from the first episode, he doesn't seem to be like super overpowered, or like he doesn't have that arrogant attitude that you normally see uh, Isakai uh, MCs have, right? And then uh, like he uses a bow. So it's it's kind of rare that you see MC that uses a bow. Oh, Usually yeah. they have like a sword or a giant axe, or they just use strictly magic. Um, but he uses but, he, he uses magic later on. Right, right. But I'm just saying, like it, it, the MC kind it kind of seems to be kind of newer. Like he doesn't follow the stereotypical MC that you would see in uh, Isekai world. So I guess, but like there will be a point where like where he gets a party and they they join him because he is OP. So. Like that, the OP, right, right. The OP factor will come in later, so that part is like right. in line with like other isekais. So yeah, but it doesn't seem bad for like isekai standards. It's I'd say it's at least average or a little bit like only, above average. The only like, I guess difference take. is like like um, one of the curses like he can't like communicate with humans. He can only communicate with like like monsters or other races. So right. So yeah. like so a lot a lot of the earlier parts like it's like it's with non humans because. Oh yeah, like the goddess, the goddess of this world is a complete bitch. So yeah. I thought that was pretty funny, but uh, yeah, he he, uh, because she, he's super ugly or I guess uh, unapproachable. Oh, they call she, him ugly, she doesn't like the guy. Like, like, yeah. yeah, he's not that bad looking. He's just like he's just not like, not like the typical like. I don't know. Uh yeah, I mean, but whatever the case, but, she, uh, she needed a hero in her world, so she called upon this guy. But apparently, since he was so ugly, she decided to not make him a hero anymore. She took away his hero status and made it so that he could only uh, communicate with everyone but humans. Yeah. Yeah, but then she's a total bitch throughout the whole process. So I thought that was pretty funny. So, so, so maybe I'll You said just you watch... read 200 read chapters for this, the David? Web, web novel, yeah. <laughs> okay, wow. <laughs> It, was it must be good, then. right? Yeah, yeah right. I don't know. You read well, that this much. Is, this is when, like, this is way back when, like, I was getting into web novels, and I was like, I was really attached to the lore of, like, just like a long running series. Mm-hmm. So, like, I was just like interested to see, like, what would happen next. So you wasted your time. Well, yeah, hey, out of the, the out of the sea of web novels, hopefully it was picked up for a reason. I read. So. I read. Okay, I'll say. I'll say. Death March was like a waste of time because, like. Great. I read so I much of anime, those, that was and, like, of <laughs> like it was not worth it. I don't see in the end. I think mm. I think Tsukimichi is better than Death March, so I definitely recommend that over <laughs> Death March. Sir, but, just I to mean, be fair, that's, that's a low bar. That is a low bar. Yes, I. So, but otherwise, it's like it's a decent, it's a decent like, Sakai. So we'll see. It's been a while since I read it, so I'll have to like I'll have to refresh my memory. But but the main character he is he is OP. So I mean. I mean, he might not sure he like he might not like f- like flex it as other isekais. Well, like, there will be a but, like like early, early on you'll see like how OP he is. Like especially of how yeah. how I mean, his like his party members follow him. It's because they realize how OP he is. I guess if anything, he's not like arrogant. I guess is the word. Like his personality I mean, is, yeah, is he, slightly he, different he than what self, I'm used to. He, he lacks self self confidence because he thinks he's ugly. So. Mm. Okay, then. <laughs> I'm gonna pass. Okay. <laughs> so, so that's all I'll mention for Suki Michi. So, 
And um, and then next show, you probably mentioned Kanjo Mo Kanjo. I mean, honestly, I, was, I really oh, don't care to mention it. But... This is by the author of Aho Girl, but it sounds like you always have. Yeah, I'm familiar with that work. Yes, it's terrible. Aho Girl is so much better. No, but I don't know. Like this show is just cool. It's bad. It's like it's like Rent a Girlfriend. Okay, like, like to me, it's like Rent a Girlfriend, right? Like it's bad, but I can't look away. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you basically like, I hope know what happens. You, you have to go into the show knowing to not take it serious because there's right. like, no fucking way would this ever be possible or happen. Right, it, it's it's it, like it's like well, Aho Girl. Yeah, like Aho it's, Girl, I guess. But yeah, you know, honestly, Aho Girl's more believable. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, I mean, this is believable, kind of. Oh, I don't know what to about it. Like the the situation is believable. The MC being the way the MC is, and still getting two girls at the same time—that's unbelievable. And having a place, and talking to their parents to have them move into the same building. Right. Yes, easy. But, Believe, very yeah. believable. Yeah, so I don't know. Like I said, you don't take it seriously, but it's it's like to me the appeal of it. It's kind of like rent a girlfriend. You you just want to know what happens, and you know, as a guy, right? I'm sorry, but it it is a very favorable position, I'd say, <laughs> that I would like to be in myself. But is it going to happen? I have, I'm pretty damn sure it's never going to happen. Oh. But it's nice to see like what it would be like. I guess I don't know. But, yeah, it's. Like it, it's kind of I'm 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 watching this show I, actually for the MC this this guy fucking hilarious where it's just like he just tells it how he is like how he feels he you know he what he he gets like the he gets his uh childhood friend mm -hmm. uh, as a girlfriend and he just acts just where he basically has like nothing from her and then he ends up going up to the roof for I forgot what reason why and then there's another girl that confesses her love to him mm -hmm. and then he he says oh, I already have a girlfriend. But wait, yeah, let me so cute. Out. Yeah, yeah, but since you're so cute, let me reach out to my current girlfriend to see if this could work. What the fuck? <laughs> and, then, and it works. And just providing works. all those what if fantasies for yeah. anybody out there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. terrible. Yeah, it's, it's horrible, yeah. but you can't look away. All right. Yeah. Guilty pleasure crash. Yeah, it's it just honestly crazy. is. I mean, yeah. man. speaking about how like a whole girl was a, a, four, a four coma, those four panel mangas. Mm hmm. Like this would make sense that like it would follow in that that format of how stupid it is. I, I don't know. I thought Aho Girl was a lot more like funny. This one is just uh, this is just this is going like way off. I don't know. I, I, I I've never taken either one of them serious, but it's you know whatever. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep watching this train wreck and see oh, how it yeah. goes. It, it's a guilty pleasure of mine. You know, I, I'm oh, not God, proud to say is. I like to watch this show, but I do like to watch this show. <laughs> So, okay. whatever. We People like watching vices. The Bachelor. I like watching this. <laughs> right, yeah, so it. sue me. Uh, whatever. <laughs> okay. So, I think it's a bit for Kanjo no Kanjo. Uh, um, that's yeah, all I have listed yeah. here. If there's anything I miss, um, feel free to bring it up. Yeah, please, in the Discord, let us know any other shows uh, I mean, I was that you guys have you guys, but, like, or... yeah, uh, Oh. Um, yeah, um, I guess but before we end, just like I guess if anyone just wants to bring quickly yeah, what they're mostly anticipating or what their I guess what their favorite is so far. So I'm gonna say Case Study of Any is definitely my favorite show of the season. I can see maybe Stunning Boy mm -hmm. overtaking it, but like so between those two, like those are my anticipated most anticipated for summer. For me, I can go really quick. Um for mine is staying on Million Lives or Remain. My list is very simple this season. I do not have many, and those are the two top on my list. Yeah, I, I think for me... Oh, go ahead, Taylor. Oh, I was just going to say, I think for me, it would have to be either Vanitas or Remain. I'm really hoping Remain can nail it. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Yeah, I think for me, uh, Bokutachi no Remake is probably my top spot. Vanitas is close, though. Those those two are neck and neck, so to speak, with what I've seen so far. Cool. Uh, for me, it's Hikarashi, but very close behind that is the Kanoho mo Kanoho, the uh, girlfriend girlfriend. Oh so. my god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I, I don't know. Because every hey, time fair. I watch it, I'm like, there's no way this is gonna work, right? And it yeah. works. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Hey, man. Yeah, I don't know. Oh. So, it's okay. We're, we're in it here for now. So yeah. So moving forward, this is our new format. Um we are uh record Hike Hero, so um look forward to our discussion for Hike Hero. And then we'll next week. Yep, and then we're gonna try to record more of those 
uh, more discussions of those shows. This is to be a new format going forward. Um, if you want to, if you still want to know our current thoughts on the episode that recently aired, we we do have a Discord. Um, we do we're gonna give our thoughts there on the episodes that air. So, uh, joining Discord, you want if you want to be in that part of the discussion. Shouts to um, Desmond and uh, Ulysses and and AJ on there already. Um, you guys are really keep me alive. So. Shout out to you guys. We really appreciate all the discussions we had. Um, we already had a lot of fun discussions on like Detectives Already Dead and on Realist Kingdom and other shows. So, so yeah, just uh, hop over in our Discord if you really want to. Um, that's with the, the weekly episode discussions. Otherwise, yeah, this is our new for the new format. Um, going forward, um, see how it goes. Um, always again, like give us your thoughts. See if you like this. Um, uh, see if there's anything you like to see. Um, right now, uh, we're just gonna go through a a lot of the backlogs of the spring show because that's what just recently aired so it's easiest to talk about so um so yeah definitely get shadow's house we'll try to get other shows in um and then stuff like tokyo revengers into your attorney we, we're just gonna wait till that finished airing and then we'll do restrictions on those shows but yeah if there's if there's a specific show you guys want to talk about just leave it in the comments and we'll try we'll try see what we can do so that's it and that's and that's it for our summer preview so we're in it here all right Thank you everyone for joining us this week. We'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.